the students, you are welcome to today's English class. I am Mr. Kyle Solomon Ulugola, your host for today's class. I am your English language instructor. This e-learning platform is brought to us by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation, a, a foundation that focuses on referring what solution to the problems of what of students in in diverse what areas. Yes. So this platform is brought to us by Isaac Humanitarian Aid Foundation. For today's English language class, I want to take you through the topic active and passive. The topic is active and passive. Now, what is an active expression? What is a passive word expression? An active expression is an expression in which the subject is the doer or performer of an action while the object is what the receiver of the action. I said an active expression is a sentence in which the subject, the subject is what? The doer of the action, the doer or the performer of the action. While the object, the object is what? The receiver of the word, the receiver of the action. Now, the action itself, the action itself is what? Is the verb, the verb. The verb can you see? We have this order. We have the subject performing what? The action. On who? The object. Meaning, the order of arrangement in an active expression would be S V O. What is S V O? That is subject, verb, and word, object. Any sentence that has this structural pattern is an active word expression. Once you have a sentence, and the sentence in terms of structure, it is subject, verb, object, relation. It is an active expression. By implication, in an active expression, the subject will come first. It will come first as what? Well, the doer or performer of the word action, which is a verb. And the action, that is the verb, is then performed on who? On the object. Hence, the object is what? The receiver of the action. So structurally, structurally speaking, an active expression is an expression that has what? Subject, verb, object, word, relation. Now, what is a passive expression? Passive expression, on the other hand, is an expression where the object, the object is inverted. The object is inverted to the subject position, meaning the object is brought toward the subject position. And the subject is brought toward the object position. Take note. In active, I said the structure of an active expression is SVO, subject, verb, object, word, relation. That is structure. But in passive, what we do in passive expressions is that what? We bring the object from its position to the subject position. And then we take the subject from its position to the word, object word position. So in terms of structure, in passive, the structure work will change. Such that now we can have the object, the verb, and the word subject. We have the object, the verb, and the word subject. This is the structure of a passive expression. This is the structure of what? An active expression. If you check your, particularly white student, white student, when you are doing your letter writing, letter writing, since that aspect involves what expression, 
a special word of uh, ideas. Most writers often what, use the passive word expression, passive style in, in what in letter writing. That's why you must be what conversant with what this particular aspect. It it enables what students to what to learn about what the dynamics of what, of a of an English word language. You can use what the active form or the passive word form. Yes, the active will take what S V O. Why the passive word will take a O V word S. And let's see that in terms of what examples now. Let's look at this. If I have the students write the notes. The students write the notes. This is an active word expression. Why? Bring out your verb first. Your verb and the verb is what is right. This is the verb. In English, the, the structure of the sentence is usually what S V O. This is the orderly arrangement of what the structure of the sentence. We have subject, verb, object, and what an adjunct. Once you identify your verb, what comes before the verb is always what the subject. So the student here is our subject. And once you have identified your verb, what normally comes after the verb is our word uh, or just you can see that uh, this sentence has a S V O structure which is what subject verb object word relation now let's see who wrote the note students that's the performer what did the students what did they do the word they wrote the note that is in parentheses, they, they write the note, write, which is the action. Now, what is that thing the students wrote? Note, which is what? Receiver. So, note is the receiver. Write is the action. Student is what? The performer. So, when you have this kind of arrangement in a sentence, it is what? Active in form. Another example, if I have the boy killed the ram. The boy killed the ram. This is also an active word expression. Why? Let's see our verb. The verb is what? Killed. That's the verb. The boy is our word, our subject. Why the ram is our word, our object. So this sentence has which other? Subject, verb, Object word relation that's the, the arrangement, so it's an active. However, we can change this word active expressions to the passive word forms. And as I've said, passive expressions are the expressions in which the object is inverted to the subject position. Why the subject? is what inverted to the object word position now for us to change a sentence for us to change a sentence from active to passive what are the steps that must be taken so the following the following are the steps to be taken in the process of changing a sentence from what active to passive when when a sentence is to be changed from the active form to the passive form you will take the following word steps the following steps what will guide your 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 process of changing from active to passive what's the first thing you do number one number one the object is brought or inverted the object is brought or inverted to the subject position that's the first step the first step the object is brought or inverted to the subject position that's number one 
Once you have brought your object to the subject position, number two, you add an auxiliary verb. Add an auxiliary verb to the sentence. Add an auxiliary verb to the sentence based on based on the tense based on the tense of the active add an auxiliary verb to the sentence based on the tense of the word active that's number two second step the third step is that you repeat repeat the main verb in the active repeat the main verb of the active in perfect form perfect form or past participle that's the third the third step to be taken in the course of changing from what active to passive three Repeat the main verb of the active expression. You repeat the word form in perfect form. Otherwise, called word past participle form. Take note. Number four. Add the preposition. Add the preposition by to the sentence. Add the preposition by to the sentence. Then number five, which is the last step for order. Take the subject, take the subject to the object position. Take the subject to the object word position. Take the subject to the object word position. These are the five steps or order of arrangement to be taken when changing words and expression from the active form toward the passive form. The steps again. One, the object is brought or inverted to the subject position. Two, add an auxiliary verb to the sentence based on the tense of the word active. Three, repeat the main verb of the active in perfect form or past participle form. Four, add the preposition by to the sentence. Lastly, take the subject, that is the one at the beginning from the front, to the word object position. Now, let's see these steps in a sentence to buttress the point. Let's see number one. Look at this now. If you have the students wrote the notes, that's example one. The students wrote the notes. This is active, subject, verb, object. But this active can be changed the word to passing out. Step one, take the, this is the verb, this is the subject, this is the word object. So step one, take the object to the word subject, which, are, which is the object, the note, it's not the word. The note, the note, that's first thing. We are taking our object to the subject word position. That's one. Look at number two, add an auxiliary verb. To the sentence based on the tense of the word active. Now, what is the tense of the active? We have wrote, wrote, that is past tense. Since active is in past tense, I will choose an auxiliary verb here that is equally what in past tense. That's what was. Was. Now, was is the correct one because what I'm transferring here is singular, which is of note. Note here is singular. So I will choose an auxiliary verb that is also singular 
and having the same tense with all the active. So I have past tense here. This is past tense. And what I'm transferring for is singular. So I'll choose a singular verb that's just a word in past form. And that's what was. Was is our right answer. So the note that's number two. Add an auxiliary verb to the sentence based on the tense of the active. That's the two. So three. Repeat the main verb. Repeat the main verb of the active in perfect form. Repeat the main verb of the active in perfect form or past participle. Now check this verb. We are to repeat this verb in perfect form or past participle. Now, the past participle of wrote is what? Written. So, written will come here. Written will come here. So, I have the note was written. What's the form? Add the preposition by to the sentence. So, I add by to the sentence. Then, the last sentence, the last order or step is our, we should take the subject. What is subject? The student. The student. Take the subject to the object word position. So, we are going to take our subject, the student now, to the word object, which is uh, the student. That's all. So, this sentence has the word changed to the passive form. The student wrote the note in passive form. What mean? The note was written by the student. That's number one. Example two now. Example two. We have a. Let's look at a. Complex examples. We have Ghanaians. Ghanaians grow cocoa. Ghanaians grow cocoa. Ghanaians grow cocoa. This is active. Why is it active? This is subject. This is the verb. This is the word object. So the change is now. First thing, object should be what inverted. This is what you want. Cocoa. Coco, that's the first thing. Now, what you are transferring is what? Singular. 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 So I will put an auxiliary verb here. That is what? Singular. And that auxiliary verb that is singular must be in the same tense with the verb or the active. Look at this. Grow. Grow is a present tense verb. Present tense. So I need an auxiliary verb that is present tense and singular. And that's what? Peace. So, Coco is then repeat the verb, repeat the verb of the active in perfect form. The perfect tense of grow is what? Grown. Grown. Then add by, by to the expression. Then number five, bring the subject to the word object position. Bring the subject to word object position. That word will be Ghanaians. So, Ghanaians grow Coco. In passive form, the word coco is grown by Ghanaians. Look at this example. The president is addressing the nation. The president is addressing the nation. The president is addressing the nation. This is an active expression. Why active? Look at the, the other. This is our verb. It's addressing the verb. The president is what? The subject. Why the nation is our word? Object. Now, to change the passive down, you know the step already? The steps, number one. The nation, this is not the word. The nation, that's first step. Two. Two. We have an auxiliary verb. We add an auxiliary verb. Or better still, we we'll repeat the auxiliary verb in the statement, which is what is. The nation is. Then, since this one is repeated, we add an auxiliary verb based on what? The tense. Answer is what? B E I N G. B. Then, this addressing will be repeated in perfect form. Perfect form. And the perfect form of addressing as well is addressed. Addressed. 
Step four, add by by to it. Step five, bring the subject to the object, which is what the president. What that mean? So the whole sentence becomes what the nation is being addressed by the president. The nation is being addressed by the president. That is the passive form of the president is addressing the nation. Then, lastly, in this aspect, lastly, we have a let's see this one. God does not tell lies. God does not tell lies. That's another example. God does not tell lies. If I ask you to, to change this for me, some students will have a problem in changing this. That is why when you are in class, you should be what? Attentive. You listen with what? Rapt attention. Now, by our other arrangement, first, identify your verb. Yes, verb does not tell. That's verb. The verb is all does not tell. Where is the subject? God. Where is the verb? Where is the object? Lies. That's object. So, in our other arrangement, what's the first thing that you arrange? Your object, which is lies. So, that lies will come first. Lies. Now, students, be careful. Whatever you transfer here, you must check. Is it a singular object or plural object? If what you take from here is singular, the auxiliary verb you will add here must equally be singular. But if what you are transferring from here is plural, plural, the auxiliary verb you will add here must be what? Plural in form. Now let's check. Look at this lines. Singular or plural? This is plural. The noun here is what? It's plural. So we are transferring what? The plural noun to the subject position. By implication, the auxiliary verb we are going to put here, which is step two, must equally what? Be plural. And then that verb must conform with what? This tense here. So we have lies. Lies, plural. Then we have does. Does is what? A present tense. So I need a present tense verb here too. That is plural. A present tense verb that is plural, which is what? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Then, next, I will add what? Our. I will repeat the main verb. I will repeat the main verb. The main verb which is ten in perfect form. The perfect tense of ten is what? Told. The perfect tense of ten is told. That's step three. Step four, step four, add what? The preposition by to it. Then step five, step five, transfer your subject to the object. So God is our subject. By the time I transfer God to the what? The object is wrong. We have a, we have a, we have this. So, God does not tell lies in passive form. What I mean? Lies are not told by what? By God. That is another word. Exactly. Okay. Let me give you one more example. A complex one. We have to change the pronoun. Yes. If I have a, the spoke to me. Look at this. They spoke to me. They spoke to me. That's the active. Then we have to change the word to passive form. All that is what? Identify the verb. Yes, verb. Spoke to. That's verb. Why they is what? The subject. The me is what? Object. So when you transfer me, me is an objective pronoun. By the time me comes to the subject solution, it becomes what? I. So I. So this one is I. Next thing, add an auxiliary verb based on the tense of the active. What is the tense of this one? Spoke. That's past tense. So I'll put an auxiliary verb here. That is also what? Past. And it must confirm to what? This subject called I. So that was. Next thing, 
I will repeat the verb in perfect form. The perfect form of spoke is what? Spoken. Spoken. Then our two. What's the last step? And the fourth step, add your word, by. Then the fifth step is our word. We transfer the subject to word, object position. Day. By the time day, day is subjective. By the time day comes to the object position, it becomes word, then. So, they spoke to me in active form will change to words I was spoken to by them in words in passive form this is the end of uh, today's uh, class thank you all for your audience and uh, don't forget that uh, this class, this e-learning platform was brought to us by Isaac Humanitarian World Foundation to help us provide solutions to what our academic world challenges and their problems. I am your host, Mr. Kaido Solomon Brumbala. I'll see you some other time. Good day class.